Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Radical Geek live stream, our Sunday night coffee talk. So we have a lot to go over this evening. And I'm just going to make sure that I am live. Give me a thumbs up if you have audio and picture because it's not looking right on my screen, but that doesn't always mean anything. Uh, crazy times abound. So uh, I do have like a special brew tonight. Oh, I can see on my phone it worked. Okay, I'm all good now. Uh, a couple different things that we're doing tonight. Most of it is going to be spent talking about our recipe, the Sabayon. Uh Hopefully my arm does not fall off from all the whisking, but we'll really get into it. Uh, the other thing is that I had a tremendous find at Costco, and that was a, the... The coffee farmers co-op and usually when I come across this it's their Sumatra blend but this one was the Oya de Chiapas which is a very favorite bean of mine and so this kind of made it extra special and we'll go through that I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get it brewing though we're just gonna do the Aeropress we've seen it I'm doing the inverted which means using the brewer upside down but I've got my coffee all ground up it's a three grind that is what you want to use for this. And I just put my AeroPress scoop, not too fussy about it tonight. Just the arrow, it, the scoop that comes with it. So it's kind of what goes. And unfortunately I have the AeroPress go, go, so it's not clear, but I can tell you that my coffee grounds are about uh, this thick. Uh, if you're using the measurements, I've got my plunger in here. And so it's in between the one and the two. And the next thing is we just take our water and I'm going to put just enough to moisten the grounds and we'll then we'll let it sit for about 30 seconds and bloom. So you don't have to do anything elaborate there. That's all we're doing. And in the meantime, let's see who all is here. I see that Carrie's here and uh, at the beginning before we went live, uh, I see that uh, Carrie gave us some really good information on Sumatra, which is one of the blends that you usually find from this current uh, coffee farmers co-op. So uh, that's a, a pretty uh, a lot of nice good information there. And then uh, Renee has joined us. Uh, Air Fry and Auntie is here. Lisa's joined us. Visual Keto's here. Jen Delaney's here. Stwang is here. Hungry Heath has joined us. Says hey yo, it's almost his birthday. Uh, and, you know, like always, my gift is to not sing happy birthday. And Sharon Holloway, the awesome, awesome embroidery uh, individual in our area who has done great work for lots of our channels, is joined us. And Ripewin is here. So, great evening so far. If I've missed anyone, I apologize. It is scrolling. And you know that, and you guys, you know, even with my big nerd glasses, I still can't see. <laughs> um Okay, so now I've got like a coffee sludge here and it has swollen up a little bit. So now we know we can set this, I can fill up all the water. And that is all we have to do for that. Set my kettle back down. And now I'm gonna screw on the filter, which I did put the paper filter and I wet it beforehand and boom. Now we just let this sit for like three to four minutes. Uh, the reason we're doing such a quick and simple brew is A, we're doing a tasting because while I've had the uh, Chiapas coffee a lot, I have never had it from the coffee farmers co-op. Again, because usually what I get from them would be a Sumatra. Uh, they do have some other roast, but so I was really stoked. This was one of those amazing, I hope other Costco's are getting it, but at the same time, I don't know. But, can I tell you, the smell is heavenly. Uh, the beans are amazing. You, can, you can't see it on the film, but their beans are super shiny and oily. But the quality of their roasting methods, they are a butter roaster. Uh, similar to like when I m mentioned the Vietnamese coffee I buy, the Nguyen brand. So you're not getting uh, bad oils on your coffee, which is a, a huge bonus for me. Uh, 
and I'm going to talk to you more about the Coffee Farmers Co-op. I'd love to share the uh, package with you, but because it's a shiny, white, glossy uh, press board, you can't really see it because of the studio lighting glare. So, unfortunately, but the picture of it uh, on the thumbnail is exactly what it looks like. And it is super cool because it's a sustainable packaging. It's a uh, paper-based. It can be recycled and it will actually break down in a timely fashion. So really good. And when we talk about the Coffee Farmers Co-op, I got all my uh, happy points to make about it. So I'll share that with you. But I'm going to set this aside with one more smell of the seam. So that we can move some stuff around and we'll talk a little bit before i start the sabayon we'll have to talk a lot while i'm making the sabayon over the clanking of my whisk because when we get to it it's going to be time intensive uh i've got here my two egg yolks i'm making a half recipe because you can't really keep sabayon as a leftovers so I was super stoked because my yolks are amber. Uh, that was just lucky. I didn't buy amber eggs, so it's just lucked out that that's what we got. I've got my quarter cup of allulose. You can use more up to a half a cup. Uh, you, and if you need more sweetener, I recommend not adding more allulose, but then adding just a little sprinkle of uh, monk fruit or an erythritol if you can have erythritol. Uh, because the two uh, together will bump up the sweetness. Uh, for some reason, when you mix the sweeteners, it comes together. I would not add liquid sweetener to a sabayon. It does need the bulk from a powdery sweetener. So, so I'm going to go ahead and dump that in there. I will tell you, you want to be careful because sabayon can get really, really sweet. In fact, uh, when I was making sure I could still make a coffee sauvignon and ketofy it, um, the first uh, batch was too sweet. But So I've got two egg yolks. It's just egg yolks and sweetener. Uh, the other thing I have is I have made an, a condensed espresso uh, using espresso powder. You will stir and just enough water, and I put measurements in the recipe, which is in the description, but like you wouldn't want to drink this. It's way too much. And we're just going to take a little bits of it and putting in uh, and uh, dropping it in, but that's going to be quite some time from now. The last two, uh, two things. So this is a low ingredient recipe, which is makes it nice, but at the same time, it's also it's a little labor intensive, but it's super fancy. The other thing that I did was I made a, uh, uh, a protein mug cake and I cooked it in my dash, uh, bunt, which, you know, we've made that same protein cake a million times. So I went ahead and you want I needed it to do it ahead of time anyways, cause I wanted it to cool down. And then I used my cocktail muddler and I mushed up six blackberries and I'm going to use that right now and put it right over the cake so that it has time to kind of soak in a little bit with the blackberry juice. So, you know, and sometimes people are like, oh no, I can't have all those berries. You know, this is a regular little dessert cup like you'd get in a restaurant. Six blackberries made more than plenty. Uh, between these two desserts, we only have one half of the bunt cake, which would probably be two mini chaffles. Uh, and the protein mug cakes don't have any cheese in it. It's an egg, avocado oil, heavy cream, and the protein powder. So uh, no worries there. Uh, I did use J. Rob's strawberry for it just to kind of boost the... Uh, uh, and it has a little uh, stevia in their protein powder, so that kind of uh, boosts the flavor profiles. So, just checking to see. I'm not quite ready to uh, mess with my coffee yet. Let's see, I moved something here, but let's go through. Oh, and uh, yeah, so 
lots a couple mentions about the uh the coffee packaging oh and carries on 240 days with no coffee and then in four more days he'll have eight months coffee free and that's so awesome that's such an achievement because i know it's a hard thing to get uh past so let's see Oh, Air Fry Nanny says some of her beans are shiny and oily and some are not. Is one better than the other? Uh, so that's a yes and no. It depends on what they've roasted it with. And for the most part, your filter is going to get rid of a lot of the oils anyways. So ultimately, is it a big deal? No. But when it comes to quality... Uh, if you're a bit bougie about it, then uh, yes, because it does sometimes impact the overall flavor profile of the coffee. So it's some of those things you can always look and see. And if they don't say, then it's gen generally just a generic oil blend and there's not much you can really do about it. Uh, but uh, there are certain coffees where they will bring that uh, special, you know, they're organic. So they use uh, that kind of a blend or in this case uh, a butter uh, for the roasting which i find gives it a, a nice rich flavor and uh coffee farmers co-op all of their all of their uh, beans whether it's the sumatra or any of the other ones they bring are french roast uh french roast, roast is not a type of bean it's the uh high temperature faster roast uh sometimes that's why when uh, some companies or coffee shops uh uh, try to do French roast and they have bitter coffee. I know that I said that like most of the time that's bad brewing, but also sometimes it's because they uh, didn't get their roasting temperature as regulated as they should. So a uh, good French roast is hard to find. Let's plan to get the coffee before we have to do all our extra work. So as you may recall with the AeroPress, I'm going to spill some of it. But now we just push it through the filters, easy peasy. And then we go ahead, because we're brewing it Americano style, uh, then we will top it off with the hot water. And then we'll get back into comments before we, uh, in earnest, begin the Sabayon and talk about both the Sabayon and the Coffee Farmers Co-op. Uh, let's see. And Air Fry Annie says she's still looking for a good coffee car fragrance. Yet, yeah, coffee fragrances never smell as good as beans in the package. And I don't know why, because it feels like that's a, a scent they should be able to emulate. But I, I guess maybe, uh, since I don't know anything about that, it's unfair of me to say that. And I believe I have... Finish plunging my coffee and smells great. I will say that is the best thing ever about this. Oh, mm. the smell is just, I'm never sad about air press coffee, even if I'm not using fantastic coffee, but when I'm using great coffee, Mm. All right. Uh, reminders about hitting the like button, and Carrie says he hit it 13 plus 1 million billion trillion times. Much appreciated. Uh, let's see, uh, some back and forth conversation. Uh, Carrie says when he was roasting green coffee seeds, he would always support co ops since they are always a small company. Cur uh, good, good. That's good to hear. And we'll talk about other reasons that's important. Now, before I get things going on the camp stove, I'm going to Americanoize my coffee. But you can see, look how delightfully rich that is. Just lovely. I know that for some of you, this is bothersome and you hate it, but I'm telling you, there's a right time and place for the Americano. And this is it. I have to let it breathe for a minute. Uh, so my two eggs and my sweetener and then my favorite little whisk. I wish I knew what these were these kind were called because if I could remember where I got it 
or what kind it was, which maybe I should actually go through the effort of looking it up, I would tell everybody to buy one. I love it. But sort of like when you are making uh, frothings or things like that, we start by whisking together the yolks and the sugar before you do anything else. And we're going to do this for a good period of time until it gets smooth and ribbony. Uh, I said a little bit uh, frothy, but I don't know if frothy is the right word. But you don't want any lumps from the sweetener or the egg. So it takes a little bit to get that going. Before and all of this happens before we even apply it to the heat. Now the heat is a uh, bain marie, which means we're going to put hot water into the pot and then the glass on top of it. So similar to a double boiler, but the double boiler usually you have uh, a, you put a dish into another container that has holes for the steam to come through. So. That's the, that's the difference between the bain-marie and the double boiler. And while I'm doing that, which I don't know if the lighting from the studio lets you see just how orange the egg yolks were, but that is also makes it nicer because you can also, what's going to happen is that the color of the yolk, when they are amber like that, as you get them beaten, will lighten up as well. Just going to give this a good stirring. Bring it all down together. And already it's definitely way fluffier. Now, you might wonder what a Sauvignon is. Uh, the Sauvignon is a, it's almost a custard, but it's not as thick as custard. Uh, and is definitely not a solid custard. It's a it's too thick to call it a sauce, although it is a sauce base. It is a relative of the hollandaise, as you know, the hollandaise. Well, I say as you know because I pretend that you have watched all my videos and and retained everything that I said. Um, hollandaise is one of the mother sauces. Uh, mother sauce means origin sauce and as weirdly as it sounds though it's almost like the mother sauce should have been the sabayon but it's not it's holidays because a holidays is more or less a derivative of the sabayon because you while you don't add sweetener the first thing you do with a holidays or a curd is you beat your eggs and you can see from these two egg yolks and the sweetener, I've now got a pretty heavy base here of my egg yolk uh, substance. It's already expanded in the bowl quite a bit. So let me get my little stove started. Now the thing with the bain marie, especially for the sabillon, is that you want the heat to come up. And, but you don't want your water to be boiling or even really truly simmering. A little bubbling is okay, but we're going for a real gentle heat here. And above all else, you don't want your bowl to be touching. Oh, turn the flame off. All right, there we go. So let me scroll back. Let's do some comments before I start messing with the heat, because once you get things going on the heat, you can't really stop. Let's see, oh, Lisa has joined us. Uh, more uh, thumbs up talk. Uh, Renee says they had their great global greyhound walk today, the 60 hounds at their location. And uh, Devara gave uh, her and others a bad scare with a near heat stroke. Oh no. So I bet that it, and had you worried, I bet. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's really scary. I, I don't know what you do with a greyhound because I have a Pomeranian and he has lots of double coats. So if they get too hot, uh, there's often the mistake made that people think they can uh, they, they can wash the Pomeranians down with the hose, but their undercoat actually protects them from that. And you're actually making it worse because you're like steaming them. Uh, what you have to do is just go ahead and bring them inside 
or put the fan on them, which is the better option, and give them lots of water to drink in uh, little sips or even a little bit of ice munchies because they need to cool from the inside out. So, but uh, greyhounds are have thin and sleek fur, so can, I don't know if you can just like towel them with a uh, cool water. Let's see if I can catch up. Um, hellos. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm going to whisk it real good. I love that song, by the way. It was great times back in that day. Uh, oh, and uh, Bluegrass Girl says, what I have is a French wire whisk. Well, it's the best whisk ever, and I love it for everything except for just eggs by themselves. Because for some reason then the white crawls up the top of it and that's annoying. But uh, for things like this, it's perfect. And it, it makes the nicest curds. Okay, I've got a good steam going here. Uh, talking about their about her greyhounds is happening and oh and uh Terry says you'll have to turn it down because we've got a good base with the sauce. Yep. All right. So, anyways, let's see. Oh, uh, and Reichwin says you can get a coat for her that can be wet down and keep it for times like this. Oh, that's kind of cool to know about that for the hounds. That's nice. And Carrie says we need tomato tomatoes to catch up. No. So... uh let's see oh and then uh uh resting uh let's see renee says it was just ice and ice water for all her arterial points and dunking her feet in the water along with wiping her whole body down uh grays are not able to regulate their temperatures like other canines yeah i knew there had to be something special about the about that so all right i'm getting this going again and i'm going to put my dish right on top I have to kind of hold it a little bit because my pots and stuff are not always exactly in sync. But this is going to start bringing the, uh, well, first of all, it's going to start melting the allulose as well as cooking the egg yolks. And uh, you'll see this is really going to come up in the volume. But it does take forever, which is why we have to talk through it. Um, Anyway, so I was telling you about Sauvignon being related to the mother sauce, the holidays. Only we're not adding fat to it. A traditional Sauvignon, you would be beating the egg yolks with sugar. And then you would, once it uh, doubles in volume, you would be adding uh, a wine to it. Either a masala or sometimes a sherry is very nice. Uh, I've seen other red wines used, but really should be the Marthalo wine, which is what would be most traditional. Now, this is a not a traditional Sauvignon because instead of wines, oh, which I see Jen is asking, we're actually going to be mixing in our concentrate espresso. So that's the biggest difference. I feel like it's too warm, so I'm just going to turn it down a little bit more. There we go. But, uh, and like I said, it's labor intensive, so we're going to be whisking for a bit. Oh, hey, Glenda, nice to see you here, and the warden. So, uh, but, so the Sauvignon is, sounds very French, and it has a lot of French technique to the sauce. But, it was made very popular in Great Britain. This, uh, a lot of British desserts feature the Sauvignon. And, uh, of course, if you've been in Italian restaurants, you've had the Zavaglione, and that is a Savion. And they say they invented it around the 1500s, but there is no documentation. Uh, so, of course, like a lot of things, uh, both the French and the British and the Italians like to lay claim to it, and who knows... I suspect that it was a combination of all of them together, but ultimately it doesn't matter to me because it is delightful, delicious, and when we do it with the allulose and with your protein uh, mug cake, yeah, maybe the sweetener is not the greatest thing ever, 
but once in a while uh, it's okay and I think that this is just a delightful treat for besties to have on a frenzy date or if you're trying to woo someone and impress them at home it's a great romantic date uh, very uh, bougie maybe an anniversary date uh, again it's a it's a special treat because like I said we're gonna be whisking for quite for a lot of the stream <laughs> so if we were going to be making curd which we have done on a video before we would have started with the egg yolks and the sweetener just like this but we would also have lemon juice in there and be cooking it until it got thick. In this case, instead of thick, it's getting uh, fluffy and uh, pretty almost, but not curd, not that jelly, because the next step for the curd would be to be adding fat, and you don't add fat to this. Uh, that's the other thing that differentiates it from a hollandaise, where you would be using butter to bring it together. Let's see. I'm trying to see, and it's hard because I can't lean over on my table. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Gentle Amy's asking if I watch Tasting History with Max Miller. He does a historical recipe and the origin every week. Uh, you think I might like it? It does sound right up my alley. I'm going to have to remember that and look it up because I do love that kind of stuff, obviously, because I'm always reading up and getting all of these things. And I don't always retain it because I've had, from the brain surgery, I've had some uh, uh, short-term retention loss. All right, so I want to bring this off for a second to show you. I know you can't really see, but from those two little egg yolks, you can see now we've got like this really thick sauce. I'm going to keep whisking a little bit longer and bring it up, but it has almost doubled in volume. Uh, it, it's a little less time than some, probably because I'm making a half batch. But we'll keep it going. I would like it a little thicker before I start adding the espresso. And then Riken says, well, considering that the British used to employ French and Italian cooks, and the French and the Italians shared back and forth, uh, you know, who knows where it came from, right? I actually, I'm going to say, yeah, French and French and Italian, absolutely. Uh, I don't believe that this was a British invention. I, I think that that was probably an import knowledge. So that makes a lot of perfect sense. Uh, Attila with the joke says, John Cleese was once asked, why does British food suck? And he says, a single answer, we had an empire to run. So rude. Uh, let's see. Oh, and uh, Carrie says we have to watch out with that cake if it tries to mug us. Oh, the mug cake joke. All right, so I've got this so that you can see it's now it's even thicker. It's like a very soft, you know, a little bit further and it would be pudding, but I don't want it to be quite that thick because it is a sauce. And now we're going to start bringing in this espresso. This is the hard part, you guys. And just bringing in a little half teaspoon at a time because it's super strong and I kind of want to go by look and feel. But when you add that first uh, half teaspoon to one teaspoon of liquid, it, there's a tendency to panic because it thins out a whole bunch. But we just have to get back to the whisking. It's all of the air that you're incorporating to bring it back up to that texture, which is why you only do it in little bits of fluid at a time. So again, back to that whole, it's a labor of love, but for ultimate deliciousness. And the nice thing about this is this concentrate I can use, you know, it can go back in the fridge tonight and then in the morning I can add a little more fluid and whip it up and make myself a Greek frappe out of it. So, lots of option there. Let's see, what do we got here? Uh, oh, Carrie says, the cool origin of the coffee way, way back, was when a goat farmer in Ethiopia had his goats ate some of the coffee berries 
out in the wild and then they ran fast and the guy ate it as well. Oh, that's interesting. I love learning this kind of stuff. Let's see. And Oh, let's see. I'm missing something from the warden, but I don't know what it was. Oh, oh, the warden feels accomplished because she changed her car's cabin filter, saving $50 plus. It was not critical dirty as they claimed. Aha. That's how Toyota gets you, though. They act like everything's an emergency and it's not. All right. So I'm here for the next uh, teaspoon. And I just drip that in and whisk. And I think that's probably going to do it because I really super concentrated it. So let me reach over and set this and keep whisking at the same time. The reason you have to constantly whisk those is because you're actually cooking those eggs. And if you don't keep it in motion, instead of being emulsified, you'll get a little bit of a scramble. And that's no good for your sabayon. Uh, Renee says she loved uh, John Cleese. Nice. That reminds me, we better make sure that we top off the oil in the Prius before I take it to Louisville this weekend. This coming weekend, rather. Uh, it does have new wipers, which is good because one of them, it was still the factory, you guys, from 2012. And one of them finally tore, so we had to replace it. It was definitely well due. All right, I'm just going to whisk this a little bit more. It is almost there, which is awesome. I guess I'm going to be way early, but that's okay because that gives us room to chat amongst ourselves. Also, for me to talk to you about the coffee company, the Coffee Co-op Farmer, the Coffee Farmers Co-op. So let me just keep whisking here and let's see what we've got here. Oh, and, uh, oh, it's, uh, see, Reichel is asking if Jen Delaney has tried Indigo Neely's, uh, newest higher fat bread recipe. Oh, it is so good with the, uh, shaved frozen butter. Man, it was fantastic. So I tried to go, I went back to my buttered powder because I want to make sure I use it up. And I made a small batch of buns and they, uh, were too dense. And I was like, man... But as it turns out, I've found some recipes that I can use the actual powdered butter in. So I think that if I'm going to make buns, I think that I am entirely likely to no longer bother and to go straight for that butter recipe. It is really, really delightful. Uh, let's see. Oh, and uh, Jen Delaney says uh, she hasn't tried it yet, but she's wanting to try it and add the uh, keto chow peanut butter to it. Yeah, I don't add keto chow to my egg bread at all. And I've just, I've got it just right. At least I had it just right, I thought, until I tried the shaved butter version. And now I'm like, that's the go-to until Indigo Neely comes up with something else. <laughs> uh I don't do the ones where they add honey or anything like that either, and I don't use arrowroot. So there is that. In fact, those butter ones is what I plan to make to take to Keto Palooza because I'm just going to pick up a package of like lunch meat at Costco and take me some buns and sliced cheese. My arm is tired. And Carrie says, Sir Mix-a-Glot would like my bun recipe. Oh, gosh, you know, I made that joke, too, because I use the larger size bun mold. So I would say, and I like big buns, I cannot lie. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right, this is good. I am taking it off the heat. I'm going to put it on my towels here for a second and get this off and move my little stove because... Even though I'm done cooking it, we are not done with this sabayon. It's too warm and I don't want to serve it hot, although you can, and a lot of restaurants do. I prefer to keep whisking it and cool it down. I will tell you, look, it, 
it piles up now just so you can see the texture in my whisk so you can see how much how completely different and there you go guys two teaspoons of espresso concentrate and uh two two egg yolks and a little bit of sweetener and you can see i've got a lot so and this was the half recipe i'd say if you're going to make the full recipe make sure that you're having some guests because it's pretty intense uh good bases for it are uh, fruits and berries especially if you don't do the espresso version and you add lemon juice instead of the espresso uh fantastic uh a lemon salion is really good with fresh fruits uh angel food cakes uh also nice is sometimes if you want to top it with some whipped cream so there's lots of options there for these I do have two desserts down here, so that's a hint if anyone wants to come from upstairs to downstairs and pick one up off the table, that's a great plan. But I wouldn't feel bad about eating it at all, especially because I use the allulose, and the allulose tends to not really bother me in any sort of fashion. You know, initially, the first when I first started trying allulose, I thought it was bothering me. And I was like, I don't know what people are talking about. The allulose seems bad. But as it turns out, it was other ingredients. It was uh, some, I think it was the chicory root fiber that was getting to me. So this is thick enough now that I have to actually scrape it my whisk to get it out of there. And then I will be able to pour it right onto these dishes. Give me a minute here. So you can see it's very viscous. And you don't, and because it's really rich, you don't put a ton of it. It is still quite warm. So I didn't really pull it down that much. But all right. So, like I said, it seems like a small dessert, but not all desserts need to be really huge to be highly impactful. Uh, all right. I'm going to just hand this off camera. Thank you. And there we go. So now we have a... Our lovely little fancy dessert dish and our amazing coffee which is now fully rested mm. all right let's see and air fry Andy says I should bring her a butter bun because she would like to try one and Carrie says I'm funny I'm glad to hear that let's see uh, I'll be bringing some of the buns. You're welcome to try one. I don't guarantee that they're as good as when you first make them. And I have to make them on Wednesday, so they'll be traveling all the way. So uh, I'll have one on Thursday. And I don't have like a good way to heat it up. They're often nicer when you can give it a little bit of a toast, but you're welcome to try it. Hmm. Oh. And then Carrie's making more jokes. Let's see. I've missed a bunch of comments. We'll have to just come back around to it. I'm glad that you guys have been chatting, though. I think that's very helpful. So the coffee is amazing. I will probably have to stock some of it up if they still have it at our Costco. Uh, vacuum seal it and uh, tuck it into my freezer because it is really good. I have to say it's giving one of my favorites, the uh, Silver Bridge that I enjoy, a little bit of a run for its money. Mm. Oh, Air Fry Nanny says we may be able to toast at Airbnb. Yeah, I could also saute it up in my pan. So let's give this a little bit of a taste because that's all we do on live streams, taste things. Mm. Hmm. 
just right. Oh, I got it just right tonight, you guys. The the berry mash with the espresso sabayon and then the uh, protein cake at the bottom. It all came together just right. Hmm. Now I wish I had more, but it's good that I don't because I would eat more. So, anyways. And Air Fry Annie says she'll need to look for a link for that copy when she gets home. I will make sure that I pull the link and I give it to you and I put it into the first comment. Or, well, uh, somebody else could comment before me, but I will get it into the comments after the whole video post. Hey, Rhonda, good to see you. Oh, and thanks. We're sure going to miss you at KPL. I, I... I'm really hoping that we get to meet up uh, next year and I'm still trying to get my calendar together to go to NOLA myself so that I can spend time with my bestie Liza and uh, then I would get to see you as well and you could show me keto things to eat there. Uh, so I am hoping that I can work that out. I've just got to really concentrate on uh, getting my job well organized so that I can actually take my vacations. Let's see. Uh, Renee says she's going to have to post some pics from the weekend, but she's got to get her uh, road meat from the local Q spot that was so good to eat on the way and through the evening, along with their own pickled jalapenos. Oh, nice. Oh, I saw today, I think it was the two crazy ketos that posted that Porky Good came out with pickled eggs and pickled sausages for those of you who like pickled eggs, which is not me. I don't know what it is, but I love pickled things except for pickled eggs. Pickled eggs are a no-go for me. I have tried so many kinds. So, so many. And, and Bluegrass Girl says uh, we should do a KPL goes to NOLA. That would be nice. I am in favor of that. Ooh, and uh, Renee says she had brisket, jalapeno sausage, and pork ribs. You know what? Hungry Heath and the Warden have been really quiet. They usually have dinner during this live stream. I'd like to know what they're having, because they are always very creative. And Carrie says, with pickled things, you can all be a big dill. That's a good one. Okay, so... About this Coffee Farmers Co-op, so A, their coffee is delicious, and this is no exception. Uh, it does bill itself as organic, which, you know, I know we talk about good things about organic, but uh, uh, organic doesn't always mean something, but in coffee it does. It makes a big deal. So anyways, I'm going to, uh, Renee, give me a hard time, says I, uh, she's hearing me say I would love some moist pickled prey six quail eggs sent your way. And that would be, no, 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 I won't eat them. I will not. So that's, that, I don't know. That's a hard limit. Uh, Carrie says he's eating off the roast that he cooked the other day. I made smoked pork chops for the week, and then I uh, uh, smoked pork chops, and then today I did, I uh, cut up a cabbage and threw that on the smoker. I need to make a sauce for the cabbage, though, because it's just, it just needs a little something, and I'm thinking like a spicy mayo, maybe, to squeeze on top of it or something. It was good, it just, need, like I said, it just was missing that sauce. Let's see. Oh, and uh, Hunger He says the warden made a test batch of pumpkin ricotta balls. Ooh, that sounds amazing. I'm looking forward to that recipe. And then the warden says they actually made tacos from a roast and trying to keep things simple and easy before we leave. Yeah, it's kind of slim pickings here. I've uh, been very minimal on the cooking, but I will probably throw a uh, roast beef in to the Instapot or something like that to leave for the household to eat while I am gone. I decided to wait to go grow our monthly grocery shop until I got back from Keto Palooza. So we're 
you know, we have a lot of food in the freezer, so I'm not too worried about it. But yeah, definitely, it's like not a lot of uh, choices here. Let's see. And Rhonda votes yes for the KPL at NOLA. Definitely. I'm, I'm excited by that idea. We'll have to really think about putting something together, some little meetup or something. Once I know my calendar together, I bet we could probably start planning some. And Jen says she made a uh, vodka frita but used pork loin. Uh, husband liked it, but she didn't. Well, I'm going to have to think about that. Maybe we can add something to it to, or uh, sauce it up somehow to make it more appealing for you. You'll have to let me know what it was about it that you didn't like. Whether it was taste, texture, or spiciness. And by spicy, I don't mean chili spicy. You know, sometimes a lot of seasonings gets a uh, musty taste to it. So, yeah. Oh, Rhonda's not a pickled egg person either. So... Okay, anyways, for reals now, I'm going to tell you about the Coffee's Farmer Co-op. So, the Coffee Farmer's Co-op is exactly that. It is owned and operated by coffee farmers all across the world. Uh, and they've created partnerships with roasters and uh, industry leaders. So, but no single entity gets to make any of the decisions. It's all done collectively, hence co-op. Everyone gets a say. And then the investments are made back into the farms and the communities surrounding the farms to help uh, with the future generations of the families. And part of that is that because they need to help foster those communities, because sad coffee fact is that there are a lot of commercial uh, commercialized uh, industry that is not great for the environment. So they need to first and foremost be good for the environment. Well, actually, that's second. It's second to the bigger problem, which is that in the coffee industry, oh, actually it might even say on the coffee farmers uh, website, but I'm not sure, but it's like more than 60% of coffee farmers actually don't make enough money, money to pull their out, to pull themselves out of poverty. So they are working super hard and I know it's more than 60%. I don't think it's as high as 70, but it's not far off. So we'll have to look up those exact numbers for you. So one of the things that Coffee Farmers Co-op does is that uh, the business leaders from the industry and the roasters pay them uh, more than um, uh, more than the normal wholesale value. And then the money that that's made not only sustains the coffee farm, but it's used in the community, particularly to do things like build schools and housing. So, uh, honestly, I could, the fact that their coffee is all organic and actually spectacular drink is amazing to me because I actually would go down a few notches to support that kind of initiative. Mm. So let's see, I'm gonna go back to some comments here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, let's see, uh, Raikwin says that was the plan, testing to see the flavors and how it would work. So hopefully we get pumpkin ricotta balls. I think that's gonna be pretty awesome. I have some ideas on that and I still want to make the pumpkin latte, but I have to actually acquire a pumpkin because we have like hardly anything in our garden this year. Normally I might have had a couple of squashes or that would have worked, but uh, we've had a deer problem. Let's see. Uh, Hungry he says that Renee left them some pickled quail eggs so he could bring them to Keto Palooza for me. Oh no, I don't think so. I will not be eating pickled quail eggs or any pickled egg. Let's see. Oh, let's see. I'm losing my spot. Oh, so anyway, so that was the big deal about this. And all I can tell you guys is this coffee is amazing. Now, I will tell you also about the Hoya de Chiapas. Uh, Chiapas. 
the the Hoya is actually it's a Mexican coffee. It's from the Amontinago de la Frontera, uh, which is uh, sort of like a hugs right around Guatemala. So uh, they've really gone all out. Uh, they pulled out all the stops on this coffee. It's spectacular. Anyways, uh, Hunger Geek keeps pushing the buttons, and, and I'm just saying it's getting closer and closer to Matreya eating his birthday cheesecake. Every every time there's a smarty pants, the risk of that cheesecake being eaten un from underneath him uh, increases. Oh, and Carrie says, I would need Dalmatians to lose my spot. <laughs> so, but Bluegrass Girl says she doesn't trust pickled eggs made by other people because the risk of botulism is too real. Uh, we have some places where I know where I wouldn't worry about it. I just really, for some reason, I hate them. I don't know what it is. And then Carrie says HEB has a wonderful Mexican coffee and the local university roasts it. Nice. Mm. This is really good, you guys. Well, Hungry he says he loves me, so I guess, all right, your cheesecake is back on your plate for now. So that was the gruey thing about this. And so the environmental aspect and the community support and the rebuild of places where they have uh, 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 poverty issues and stuff like that, trying to rebuild and support that is a really big deal to me. Uh, the other really cool thing that they are doing is they are starting a research and development center so uh, for coffee processing, which is also extra, extra cool. So, uh, however, that's a long ways away. Uh, I believe they don't expect to complete that project until like uh, 2035 or 2040. Again, I'd have to look that up, but yeah, so super cool. And like I said, so it's enough. Not only is it delicious, but I will probably go and pick up a couple more cartons of it and freeze it off. And the warden says to keep him to keep Heath in line. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be so funny! I cannot wait. I have been plotting something. It's gonna be great. Um. All right, so. That's true. And he says he did wake up super early yesterday and went to buy goat cheese for me. So, okay, there's that. Again, forgiven. But uh, I feel like I was forgetting something important that I wanted to tell you related to the Sabayon. But it long went away. And Bluegrass Girl is asking, what is Heath's favorite cheesecake flavor? I would like to know that as well because he hasn't actually ever answered that even though he's been asked a few times. We went with a surprise from uh, Christopher of Slapstick Keto. Uh, who is a master of cheesecakes. He actually, I believe he has said on one of his videos that he actually used to make and sell cheesecakes. So, I'm looking forward to that. I have not... You know, I make a pretty mean cheesecake, but not anywhere near any kind of professional level cheesecake. So, it'll be pretty interesting. I feel like I'm forgetting something, and I just, so I'm sort of uh, not sure, but I think actually it's just that it's close. Oh, yes, I was forgetting something. Oh, important things. So, a reminder that if you are not at Keto Palooza, on Friday night, you want to tune in to Hungry Heath and uh, the Warden's YouTube channel, the Hungry Heath channel, because not only do we want to share our experiences with you and uh, we're missing you while we're there in person, we're going to, uh, several of us are getting together in my Sweet to Livestream for the Friday night feast. 
And we have a little giveaway going, and that is going to include a pack of the Hungry Heath seasonings. And as you may remember last week, we used this Gojo on the go uh, coffee brewer. And I have one new in the package to give away. The Jogo has a silicone tip to help regulate the temperature from your brew, and then has a micron filter down at the end. So that if you are hiking or packing, boom, you pop out your little uh, uh, portable uh, Bunsen burner and you heat up some water. You pour the water right over your grounds in the cup and the micron filter uh, goes right in to your mix and then you drink straight in. So you do not have to worry about having a special coffee device because you have this easy handy dandy pocket portable Joe go to have your Joe on the go. So we will be giving that away. And if you haven't had Hungry Heath seasonings before, he has a Texas Five Spice that's a little bit zippy, but really delicious. Oh, and Bluegrass Grill says uh, they're going to give away a vanilla paste. How awesome is that? Uh, I saw a picture of that vanilla paste. It looked spectacular. Uh, so much so that I'm hoping to buy one myself. Uh, perfect for baked goods or in uh, sweet sauces. Oh, and James Hoffman had a brewed coffee in a pipe. Carrie, I'm so glad you said that. We saw that and I want one of those for the live stream so bad, but it is $99. And so I have to maybe grow the channel a little bit to see if I can convince them to send me one. Uh, Jogo sent me one to give away, and so that was great, but uh, yeah, that's the bright. I think I talked about it at one point, and it just looks hilarious. Like, I just got to have it, and I thought that would actually be great for a night when we did uh, things that were not healthy, and so uh, I know that the keto police will be unhappy with me, but I think the bright should be done on a night when we're having like a cigar social in the yard or something and we just can live stream the fun all at once. So that is my plan. And now I'm going to go finish my dessert and wish you guys an awesome, lovely Sunday evening and so that we can, for those of us who have to get up and work in the morning, get rest for that. So, oh, and Lisa says uh, she would also like to buy some vanilla, but uh, she doesn't know what to do with the paste. So we'll have to post some recipes. I think we can make that happen. Uh, oh, and Sharon Holloway says she's adding a Hungry Heats Creamy Koozie to give away, a soda can koozie and an apron for the giveaway. Sharon, you are amazing. That is extraordinarily generous. Wowee! Plus, did you know, guys know that the other thing Sharon is doing is that we have our Keto Ohio meetup in, on October 15th. It's a small little restaurant meetup. It's our first return back to in-person things. And uh, Sharon is going to take, is, uh, has designed some bags for us. So that is going to be super, super cool. Oh, and Sharon is asking if Autumn will let us hand out a flyer at registration to tell folks about the live stream. You know, I don't know. We didn't ask. I'm sure we can ask. Uh, getting them printed or in time might be uh, uh, hard. But we'll have to think about it. Oh, but Sharon loves giving gifts. Well, I, I can tell. But you're, and you're so talented. I really appreciate it. So, exciting stuff. So that's going to be, wow, so that's going to be a live stream not to miss. And if you are a member of our channels and you want to stop by and say hello to us, you know, let me know once we hit the ground at KPL and we can uh, uh, get you the room number uh, Thursday at Keto Palooza. I will be, will be uh, just getting checked in, but Friday at three o'clock. Once registration starts, uh, actually also uh, Jen and I are going to be uh, present in at one of the rooms with some board games so we can play some games and hang out a little bit before we actually have to, before we go to the meet and greet and then we go live stream. So 
Yeah, Friday is a busy day. And Carrie says he needs to make a coffee mug that has his tagline of being great and cheesy. You sure do. That would be awesome. Oh, and the warden says she made a pumpkin spice syrup using the vanilla paste. Awesome. I can't wait to uh, check it out. All right, everyone. You have a great evening. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope that you enjoyed uh, the Sauvignon and now you feel confident like you can make one because you can see... Other than a lot of whisking, it's not hard to do. So you have a good one. All right, bye-bye. Oh, he says he's bringing me a board game to add to my collection. Awesome. Bye for reals. Good night, everyone.